Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to my press conference this afternoon. Two weeks ago, I told you I was planning a cabinet reshuffle, and today I'm announcing the new lineup. It will be a more extensive reshuffle than is usual this early in the term of government, and I have two reasons for this. One is that the Minister for Finance is changing. Following Budget 2021, Minister DPM Heng is relinquishing the finance portfolio. Finance is a key ministry, so when the finance minister changes, there are many repercussions for the other appointments. Secondly, I'm also moving the ministers for health, for manpower, and for trade and industry. These are the frontline ministries dealing with COVID-19 and its consequences. I considered making these changes after the general election last year, but then we were still in the thick of COVID-19, and so I decided that we needed to let the ministers concentrate on fighting COVID-19 at that point. Now that the COVID-19 situation is more stable, although by no means over, I'm able now to make the changes. And with these major moves, there are inevitably other consequential adjustments to the appointments. I'm therefore taking this opportunity to redeploy some of the other ministers to give them fresh responsibilities and gain different exposure and experience. Let me now run through some of the details. As I announced two weeks ago, Heng Sui Kiat will continue as Deputy Prime Minister and Coordinating Minister for Economic Policies. He will also continue to oversee the strategy group within the Prime Minister's office, which coordinates our policies and plans across the government, as well as the National Research Foundation, NRF. As Finance Minister, Sui Kiat has carried a heavy burden, especially during COVID-19, when he delivered multiple budgets within the year. Relinquishing finance will free him to concentrate more on the whole of government economic agenda, including chairing the Future Economy Council and incorporating the recommendations of the emerging Stronger Task Force into the work of the Council. He will also continue to co-chair the JCBC, the Joint Council for Bilateral Cooperation, together with PRC Vice Premier Han Zheng. Lawrence Wong will take over as Minister for Finance. Lawrence has been assisting Sui Kiat as Second Minister since 2016, so he has the experience and is a natural fit for the job. The MOF team is otherwise unchanged. Minister Indrani Raja will support Lawrence as Second Minister. And on COVID-19, Lawrence will continue to co-chair the MTF, the Multi-Ministry Task Force. Chan Chun Singh will move to the Ministry of Education. Chun Singh has done an excellent job getting our economy back on track and preparing our industries and companies to respond to structural changes in the global economy. This has been a major national priority. Now I'm sending him to education, where he will build on the work of previous education ministers to improve our education system, to bring out the best in every child and student and to develop young Singaporeans for the future. Nurturing people is quite different from growing the economy or mobilizing unions. And I look forward to Chun Singh taking on this fresh responsibility and broadening his experience. Gan Kim Yong will take over as Minister for Trade and Industry. Kim Yong has been Health Minister for almost a decade. In fact, well, almost a decade. He has been a point man in the fight against COVID-19, co-chairing the multi-ministry task force. At Ministry of Health, he implemented many major healthcare reforms and leaves a significant legacy of enhancements and improvements to the healthcare system. Right now, MTI, where he's going, is a key ministry. In MTI, Kim Yong will oversee our economic recovery from COVID-19 and pursue new opportunities to grow our economy. He is well suited to this role because he was previously Minister for Manpower and he also served in MTI, in fact with me, very early in his career before he spent 16 years in the private sector. 
Ong Yi Kang will take over as Minister for Health. He has been dealing with major challenges in transport since he took over transport from Corbun Wan. He continued Bun Wan's improvements to the public transport system. Since COVID-19, Yi Kang has been working on reopening our borders and protecting our status as an ANC hub. At the Ministry of Health, he will build on the strong foundation laid by Kim Yong in healthcare and deal with issues like ageing, healthcare infrastructure and healthcare finance. These need our unremitting efforts, spanning multiple health ministers. Yi Kang will co-chair the Ministerial Task Force on COVID-19 together with Lawrence Wong. Iswaran will take over as Minister for Transport. At MCI, he has significantly improved government's public communications and sense-making capabilities and helped us understand and respond to citizens' views and concerns. He's managed major upgrades to our tech infrastructure, for example, the award of the 5G tenders and the rollout for the new 5G networks. At Transport, he'll continue improving the quality, affordability and environmental sustainability of our transport system. Another important task is to maintain our status as a global ANC hub in the post-COVID-19 world. MOT also deals with ongoing sensitive airspace and maritime issues concerning our neighbours. Iswaran will also continue as Minister in Charge of Trade Relations in MTI. At MCI, Josephine Teo will succeed Iswaran. As Manpower Minister, Josephine was responsible for a whole range of policies, including worker safety, labour relations and retirement adequacy. Under her leadership, we achieved tripartite consensus on a 10-year roadmap to raise the re-employment age and the retirement age. We also made a major expansion of the Silver Support Scheme. Last year, in the unprecedented COVID-19 downturn, MOM led our efforts to support local job creation and training opportunities. At the same time, MOM has been on the front line dealing with the migrant worker dormitories. Through all this, Josephine has been steadfast in working to support our lower wage workers and upgrade their incomes. This project is making good progress and she will see this through even though she has gone to MCI. Josephine will continue as Second Minister for Home Affairs. Tan Si Ling will step up as Minister for Manpower. Since he was appointed Second Minister in MOM in July last year, he has been leading our efforts to tackle COVID-19 in the migrant worker dorms. Now he'll take on a full range of responsibilities in MOM. Sealing will continue as Second Minister in MTI. This will help us connect the work of the two vital economic ministries, particularly on restructuring the economy and the workforce. The rest of the ministers and ministries are unchanged. There are some of, quite a number of the ministers also have additional responsibilities. Most are unchanged, but I'll mention two changes. Josephine Teo is taking over as Minister in Charge of Smart Nation from Vivian Balakrishnan and taking over as Minister in Charge of Cybersecurity from Iswaran. And Edwin Tong will take over as Deputy Chairman of the People's Association from Chan Chun Singh. Apart from the ministers, I'm also rotating some of the newer POHs. Ko Po Kun will be the Senior Minister of State at the Ministry of Manpower in addition to his appointment in health. Po Kun has been seconded to NTUC as Deputy Secretary General since 2018. I have asked the NTUC Central Committee to let Po Kun come back to the government, which they have agreed. And it's very good for the labour movement to have someone familiar at MOM, especially one who has been working on worker training. So that's why I'm sending Pokun to MOM. After discussing with Secretary General Ng Chi Ming, I'm sending Chi Hong Tat to NTUC to replace Pokun. 
Hong Tat will relinquish his appointment in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but he will remain in the Ministry of Transport. At MFA, Hong Tat will be replaced by SMS Sim An, who will in turn relinquish her portfolio at MCI. And Minister of State Tan Kiat Hao will replace Sim An in MCI, while remaining in MND, his other appointment. Finally, Parliamentary Secretary Rahayu Mazam will take on an additional appointment in MCI. All these new appointments take effect on the 15th of May, after the next parliamentary sitting. Most of the 4G ministers have already accumulated experience in a wide range of portfolios. This round of cabinet changes will allow them to gain new experience and exposure. They've got to get to work quickly because although COVID-19 is stabler now, we are still in the midst of a public health and economic crisis. The reshuffle is also an opportunity for them to work together in new capacities so that they can understand each other better and strengthen their cohesion as a team. This will make the new team readier to take over from me and my older colleagues. And I ask Singaporeans to give me and my cabinet team their full support. Now let me say a few words in Mandarin before I take questions. Tajasia 很多政策和措施都需要财政部的协调，因此财政部换人时肯定会牵涉到不少其他部门的人选。第二，去年的官兵疫情影响了我大选之后的布阵。大选后，我本想调动贸工部、卫生部和人力部的部长，但因为当时